which to me tells me that the real monster here, the real monster in Candyman, is not necessarily Candyman himself. Mm -hmm. It's white supremacy. What's going on, everyone? Welcome to a new episode of Mostly Wrong Opinions. I'm Tyrone, as usual. That gentleman right there is Devin. <laughs> what we got on the chopping block for you guys today <laughs> is a direct sequel to the 1992 Candyman movie, ironically called Candyman. I feel really connected to this story. Go on. Right here in this neighborhood, the legend started. Uh huh. And the legend is. If we say hey, his hey, name five, five times, times while looking in the mirror, yeah. we could summon him. Summon the Candyman. Hell no. Directed by a first-time director, Nyak DaCosta. And uh, it is produced by many people, but of course the head producer that a lot of people will see on this is Jordan Peele, famed director and writer of uh, Us and Get Out. And he also co-wrote this film too. He was supposed to originally write and direct the film, and, and he passed off the directing uh, uh, work over to Nia Costa. She has her own like style, and I th I thought this film is r directed really really well. Mm. And I kind of came at this from from an uh, interesting point of view, in that I literally I, I I watched Candyman one, and then I got in the car or got got on the train and saw Candyman two. So okay. like it was like <laughs> boom boom back to back. And so this one this this film has a lot more like directorial flair than the first one did absolutely the first movie had that old it kind of seems late 80s feel to a horror film this one man this does have a lot of style man the opening shot the camera is panning across the skyscrapers in a real awesome way and it's upside down as in as in meaning of reflections and the, uh, the introduction cards on, on this film, like the Universal Studios and the MGM, that's all backwards, too. It, it just shows a, a, a symbol of what's going to come. Right. They're not, just, they're not just backwards. They are a mirror reflection. Mirror reflection, yeah. And, and of course, mirrors are important in this film because you got to say the name Candyman five times in a mirror, and he will appear. Usually, he will appear behind you. So, in the mirror. It's interesting how, the as the film progresses, more and more reflections pop up in the film so, so it's like it's, it's especially around our main character uh suddenly there he's there there are reflections in window panes reflections off of like you know some like a little reflective surface in the bathroom so suddenly there are mirrors everywhere so more and more mirrors start popping popping up and what's interesting is the mirrors often have some sort of discrepancy in them like something is off in the mirror like right. so he'll move and then but the mirror won't move or, or maybe they'll be, they'll literally be, Candyman will be standing in the mirror, and, and but he like, won't be standing in the real world. It's like standing in the mirror, but he's in a far distance. Right, which right. Is so, so you, you cool. kind of, you kind of have to like search to find him. So, so that's, that's, that's kind of a cool thing because it makes you, it makes your eye kind of wander all around the frame, uh, looking for Candyman in, in mirrors, in reflections. It's, it's pretty, it's pretty clever. Yeah. Now, you know, as a kid, um, it wasn't that I wasn't allowed to see horror movies or things like that. It's just it didn't come across me immediately to to watch Candyman over the years. Of course, I was a, I was a fan of Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy Krueger. It was just, he's my favorite. But Candyman has a lineage I did not know. <laughs> it has a lineage of way back in the day, and it, it the roots are found in. Very, very deep racism packages, okay? Right, and most of that is in Candyman 1, where we learn that the, the original Candyman, I guess you could say, the original the original spirit is a, is a painter uh, who was mm. like back from 1890, who fell in love with a white woman and was brutally uh, killed for it. Mm -hmm. Father executed a terrible revenge. He paid a pack of brutal hooligans to do the deed. They chased Candyman through the town to Cabrini Green, where they proceeded to saw off his right hand with a rusty blade. And no one came to his aid. But this was just the beginning of his ordeal. Nearby, there was an apiary. Dozens of hives filled with hungry bees. They smashed the hives and stole the honeycomb and smeared it over his pr 
prone naked body. What was interesting is when I was watching the original one, I was like, why is he called Candyman? Because there's nothing exactly. and not and not Honey Man. Because he had honey around him because of the bees. But I was like, why is it called Candyman? But this film explains why he's called Candyman. Yeah. And it, because of, you know, different, like you said, different iterations of this same haunted spirit or something. One of them, he did possess a, a Candyman. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, yes, yes. Handing out candy. So <laughs> that's that that's how that's kinda how he got his name. Well I tell you, when 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 homie came through that hole and he was like, Let me show you the face that he made. You ready? <laughs> no, I'm he was, ready. He was like Turn the hat around. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. <laughs> that's what he did! And, and I'm like, and, bro. I don't want no suckers, no, no, no malinators. <laughs> and the actor, the actor, he had like a really big like mouth, so it was like the grin was like huge. It was like spreading all over his face, so he, he looks really creepy. Let me do, let me definitely. Do, when, when, when the cops started coming around the corner, which we'll get to these 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 cops and the whole story of the background. This is what he did when he was presenting the candy and the cops come right. Yo, so you 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 do you be the cops and you be like, open up in there, and I'm gonna show you what what, what his face is. Okay? Do, 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 do. Hey. <laughs> that's, what that face. Like, that's what he did. He's like, he went right back to the weird shit. It's crazy. It's <laughs> really funny. To be honest, I've only seen Candyman one, so I haven't yeah, seen the me sequels. Too. Me too. But <laughs> from what I understand, with Candyman two and moving forward, mm -hmm. including Candyman one, they were all written by white people, and they were all directed by white people. So this is the first one that was written and directed by black people, and you can tell because when I watched Candyman one. While it was well intentioned, you know, it still was full of like you know racial stereotypes. So it with, was, man. With with the black people like, oh no, nothing, you know, that, that kind of thing. <laughs> Get out this hood, white <laughs> lady. Yeah, that was like, but you, you ain't hey, supposed yo, five to be right here. Five coming up the stairs. <laughs> yeah, right. Yo, lock the car. Yeah, lock the car. Which way you go? Just going inside. Yeah. <laughs> y'all can't come up in here. Hey, come up in here. Excuse me, y'all can come up what in here. What are you looking for? Just going up to see a friend of ours. So you're not the police? Huh? Wow. Look like 5-0 to me. Hands up, people! 5-0, coming out the back door! Police! You here for the sweep? No. Uh, we're not cops. We're from the university. Well, you don't belong here, lady. You don't belong going through people's apartments and things. Yeah, all those stereotypes were all there, and you're like, okay. Even though it was, like, well-intentioned, right? They're trying to... The movie was trying to say, and the original movie was trying to say that most white people don't care about the ghetto or, or, the, or, the, or the project, specifically the Cabrini Green projects. So it's like, okay, fine, I get it. I, 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 I understand what your intention was, but yeah, the stereotypes were, were there. In this film, those stereotypes are not there, obviously, because these are, these are black people who wrote, he wrote these characters, so they actually know what black people sound like so a lot a lot a lot of that stuff is not present this time around you mentioned uh cabini green and uh that is basically that is the place where the original candy man where he was um you know ran down and, and ran down by uh the rich uh white plantation owners and uh was killed for um uh, liking the uh, the plantation owner's wife and having a baby and all that and uh he was killed there and his spirit had lingered on around that that area and he basically embodied every wrong every wronged black man that was killed over some hatred bullshit <laughs> you know what i'm saying right so like your struggle there to figure out what the spirit wanted is i think that's kind of one of the few flaws i think in the writing of this film and in and in the original yeah. where it's like what does what does this spirit want why does he kill it's not 100 percent clear and i'm not sure if that's intentional or not like maybe you can put me that's up for your interpretation but it's 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 not clear exactly why this spirit kills but it, there are there are patterns right like you said uh he seems to possess people who were wrongly accused especially black people who are wrongly accused of something heinous and usually they're wrongly accused of that thanks to something 
racist or some sort of white supremacist idea. Yeah. But, but why is he violent now? I, again, I'm not 100%, 100% sure about that. And the movie doesn't seem to be all that interested in explaining it. So, yeah. Candyman has always been about race and about, you know, white supremacy being the ultimate villain. Uh, but this is the only Candyman film to star a black person. Yeah. So, yeah, this movie dealt with, like, a lot of, like, serious issues dealing with race and dealing with uh, gentrification. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you how'd you feel about that kind of stuff? Because uh, most movies don't even touch any of that. I get because most movies are written by white guys, and either they're afraid or they do it clum clumsily, like the first movie did. But this movie, like, really went all in on it. Like, what, how did you feel about that kind of deal? Um, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed that that part. You know, uh, I want people to see it for what it is and actually, you know, get the lessons from it. You know what I'm saying? And when I say people, you know what type of people I'm talking about. <laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> but are those, kind of, are those kind of people watching this film? And I, I was thinking know. about that That's as well, too. That's what I was too. thinking, too. I was like... The, I feel like the answer is probably no. I feel like the only... The only the only people watching this film are people who you probably all probably already are aware of these kinds of issues. So to be blunt, I went on to IGN, which was a complete mistake, and I and I read <laughs> I read some of the comments. I read some of the comments on IGN's review of this film. Yeah. I didn't even read the review. I just went straight to the comments. Right. And IGN is unique because you know IGN is almost all little white boys right so I want, I want to see what little white boys think about it mm -hmm. now it doesn't matter what the topic is it ign's comments are always filled with you know I thought, racist but i, I thought I, I thought we supposed to be woke though right <laughs> Thought that's what we're supposed to be. Who? Little white boy? I thought, thought the whole the whole uh, generation Z is supposed to be uh, uh woke now. <laughs> oh no, Gen Z is not woke. They are just as they're just like every other generation. It's I hate people say that kind of thing because to actually was, be aware. That was it, that was I know, that was I know. Like, like a toy. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, I feel like in order to like learn stuff, it takes an it takes an effort. You don't you don't I don't think the next generation is just born more woke or something. It takes it takes it takes an effort. But when I was looking at some of the little white boy comments on IGN, I expected them to be full of racism and and you know typical IGN stuff. And they did they didn't let down. They they, they did not let me down at all. And what I, I was interested to see their criticism because I'm always inter interested to see what other people think. And one of the things that they said was they thought that the depiction of the police at the end was unrealistic. And I'm like, what? <laughs> so that I, I kind of I lands me to my point where you're like, are, are the people who need to see this, are they, are they watching it? And are they picking up what's being put down? Yeah. I'm not 100% sure. And I don't, I don't really care because I did, and I, and I, I really, I really like that kind of stuff, because for people who, if you've seen the film, hopefully you've seen it already, because I'm gonna spoil a little bit. But in the end, yeah, uh, it'll, the, 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 our main character, uh, the, the, our main character's girlfriend, and our main character, they're both in Cabrini Green, mm -hmm. and the police are outside, and the main, the, the girlfriend, she's like, help in here, help, and the police come in. And they immediately shoot the main character dead, right? There's very, there's almost, there's almost no words. Ain't no talking. Boom, shot dead. Yep, no just shot dead. Yeah, they don't say anything. They don't assess anything. He's already down on the ground, but they shoot him dead. They shoot him dead. And then after that, the police try to convince or try to blackmail the girlfriend into saying that the shooting was justified. Mm. And it was, it, it, it was interesting to see what some white people thought about that that they thought that was unrealistic and it, to me i think that tells me the power of media right right this is what this, this is why i like this is why i love movies this is why i'm hard on movies mm -hmm. because people who grew up with a diet of csi and law and order <laughs> and cops they grew up believing the police are <laughs> always the good guys. They're right? not people. Don't <laughs> trust them. Right? They are. They are. They are flawed humans, yeah. like everyone. Everybody. And they, exactly. And sometimes they've got all kinds of horrible biases. But because of, I think because of the power of the media, 
in the white supremacy. <laughs> An entire you know, generations of, of white people grew up believing that the police were the good guys. And this uh, film very explicitly states, they are, at least these, the police that we see in this film, they are not good. Now, from what I understand, and I'm, this is me speaking out of pure ignorance, from what I understand, in Candyman 2, Candyman kills a police officer, and it goes uncommented on, because the director and the writer were white. Why don't you just sit down over here? Right? Yeah, how you doing? Take a look. Take a good look. I can't keep doing I this. I said look at it. Candyman. Don't. Candyman. <laughs> It's just a thing that happened. But in this film, it was like a whole thing about police corruption. To me, it rang true. If that 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 rang true to me, I mean, it, felt, it, it felt like if there's a shooting like that, they the police would cover their ass. There's others films that shoot a place beyond pines. Corrupt, yeah, corrupt, right. corrupt uh, uh, cops, and that was white against white corrupt cops. That's true. Okay, so that's true. It's it's it's, it's that's a good point. It's a whole thing of that. The, the the people that's supposed to be here to protect us, black people, the people that's here to protect us, white people, whatever, they are, they're not doing it correctly. They're not doing it the right way. <laughs> so even <laughs> even with our the last episode where we talked about no sudden move, where they the the the, the black neighborhoods are being destroyed again. No sudden move. The frustrating thing of no sudden move is they really didn't talk about this. In we had to dig. They just kind of yeah. You, you got to dig for it now. <laughs> but the 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 black community is being destroyed. But the black community had its own uh, mob, right? And its own mob was protecting the community, right? So, <laughs> so, who do you think they were protecting the community from? <laughs> but you know. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's I, I I always find that I always find that argument interesting, and I I like movies like this where you can talk about these big these bigger themes, but the movie isn't like necessarily like beating you over the head with it, right? It, it, there there's like a fantasy element going on, a horror element happening, so it's not like it's not like overt in your face, but it's hard to escape the fact that Candyman is a victim of white supremacy. Yeah, and and it was in each iteration of the the character because the way that that the director and the the DP you know uh, tells these stories of what happens to Candyman or a version of Candyman is through these paper puppets. Beautiful. Oh, gorgeous. Beautiful. I mean, gorgeous. I could watch a whole movie like that. Yes, like, I could watch amazing. a whole movie. And what I did, what I've noticed, because I'm the person, I'm the person who saw Candyman twenty. 21 first and then went back to revisit mm. uh 1992 the music in candy Can candy man one is the same as the music in candy man two and it's just slowed down a little bit more um which makes it a little bit more eerier mm -hmm. um and it, and it's really slowed down at that part where at the end stay till the, the, the after the, the last shot people when you watch this movie um where they're doing the puppet, the, the paper puppet puppetry, and it's telling the story of these black men that is either gunned down or hanged or 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 just obliterated and because like, because of white supremacy. Yeah. yeah, and the the big underlining point of that is those stories were real, and they and they those have those, those stories that they were happening that they were animated with the paper puppets actually happened to actual real life human beings in real life and their story fits right in to this fictional thing about about movie monsters yeah which to me tells me that the real monster here the real monster in Candyman is not necessarily Candyman himself mm -hmm. it's white supremacy and i that to me it's that that speaks a lot and so apparently i'm not from chicago i've never, i've only visited but apparently Cabrini Green is an actual or was an actual project yeah. in in Chicago and they actually shot there in Candyman 1 mm -hmm. when they want to come back to shoot there again gentrified. for the 2021 version <laughs> it, yep the area was gentrified but the tower was torn down so mm -hmm. uh, because of white supremacy and the film talks about that how white supremacy builds the ghetto and then white supremacy criticizes the ghetto and then white supremacy tears down the ghetto. 
<laughs> so it's like, Jesus. What, what you want us to do? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's, it's so you frustrating. Know? Even and when we, again, even I, when we I, come I, I up like, like the Jeffersons, man. Even when we come up yeah. like the Jeffersons, we're looked at. Our 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 character is still, you know, demonized for, for some stupid reason. And that and they talked about that too in this movie because they were during their conversation about how Cabrini Green was well the, well, the tower was torn down and the area was gentrified. The ma- our main characters talked about that with our main character's sister's brother yeah. and. Her, and and his his boyfriend, mm-hmm. and the boyfriend was like, "Oh yeah, it was torn down and gentrified to make nice apartments, like this place, right?" <laughs> and there and, and everyone was like, <laughs> it, was, "It was like a terrible pause." Yeah. But I, I think that what they were saying there was, they kind of touched on that even, like it's, it's it's hard it's hard not even even black people can sometimes be gentrifiers. And it's like, damn, we can't win for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> even even when you come up, it's 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 sometimes it, it, it's you still lose. It, it's frustrating. Yeah, man. Uh, it's an exhausting conversation, but it I think it's good and it's interesting that this movie can allow you to have these conversations. And I do appreciate films that have things on their mind. I always talk about that. I like movies that have something on their mind, something to say. And this movie, it's like it's like. The pot's like boiling over with things to say. I don't know if it says it all perfectly, but uh, yeah. it has a it has a lot on its mind. I always go into these movies where if it's like a sequel or something like that, sometimes you don't have to see the first one to really understand the story. This one you do because it's a it's a direct a direct like right after like twenty nine whatever thirty years after. Of right, it's a it's a direct sequel, but the film it it, it pauses for a minute to talk about the events of the first film in this film what's interesting is now that the events of the first film are like urban legend right when they when they when they go back and explain the events of the first film they explain it wrong (laughs) which which is which is interesting well they 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 embellish on things at the end right yeah in the original in the in the original film we see the the helen the white lady who's the main character in the first film she 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 climbs into the into the into the pyre and rescues the baby, but when they're when they're retelling the story later, she's insane and she's mm-hmm. taking the baby into the pyre. Yeah. So, so it's like but it's then, funny how, what which which things and again I think that the film is making a point about like how urban legend always gets kind of like muddy after a while. Yeah, because in the, in the original film she saved the baby. I guess let me talk about the special effects in this movie, man. The uh, dis, dismemberment. Of people, I guess when it, or of of people, it was very very graphic. It was uh, like the the makeup that was on the main character when he started to like kind of mutate, in a way, it was nerving. Like his skin felt like a hive, or uh, you yeah, know, it looked like, like, a like a honeycomb or something. Yeah, yeah. I was like, <laughs> yeah, it was pretty nasty. Yeah, made my which is, <laughs> we, we, yeah, it was nasty. <laughs> which again, the first movie wasn't that graphic. There was blood, and you know there was murder, mm-hmm. but it wasn't like nearly as graphic as this film. This film is a lot. There's a lot more gore in this film. I, uh, I'm just gonna be honest with you guys. You know, this movie is not forgettable. It's going to stay in my mind when it comes to how much of an art piece that it is when it comes visually. Visually, <laughs> this 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 woman has it. Yeah, yeah. I When I watched, finished the movie, you know, I, I kind of wanted to, like, rewind it. So I could go <laughs> see, like, it's like some of the things, like, like, like I said, you, your eye kind of, like, starts to like like wander the frame of every shot so you, you you're like oh, i know i missed something here i know i know candy man was in that shot somewhere or something oh. strange was happening in this shot and i and, you know i might have missed it so you you, you do kind of want to like you know watch it again but mostly for those little 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 details i'm gonna go ahead and give my rating on this this film uh this film was uh in, intriguing you know it kept my uh attention you know all the way through uh, the first one did 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 also for me, um, it, but the first one was more of a quintessential horror film. But this one is a horror film that's based around a lot of the uh, undertone racism things that's, that's happened to this whole uh, community over the years. And um, but uh, with all that said, I'm gonna give this movie a eight. An eight. Okay. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. I kind of want to watch it again. Um, I. 
went in with high expectations because again the Jordan Peele deal and I, I thought the trailer was awesome. Yeah. Uh, and I was like, well, I hope my, my expectations aren't too high and this movie isn't going <laughs> to let me down. But it didn't. It, yeah. it, I, I, I thought it, I thought it really met it met it really well. And it has some really heavy big themes uh, that it, I thought it dealt with really well. So yeah, I think I will give this an eight as well. I was kind of waffling between an eight and an eight point five, but I think an eight is probably probably about right. Boom. Like, we did it again, man. We were agreed on something. <laughs> wow, it's like the second episode where we agreed on something. Wow. <laughs> every once in a while, every once in a while. Yeah. Um, so I gave this movie an eight. Devin gave this movie an eight. That is our review on the 2021 Candyman and a little bit of, you know, the, the previous one. You should say it. Candyman. Say his name. All right, everyone, that is it. Uh, I'd like to thank you for clicking on this video. Uh, please do us a favor, subscribe to the channel, people. We need to get these subscriptions up. Half of y'all that's watching us, y'all are not subscribed. We see you in the in the little <laughs> analyst thing. We see you. <laughs> so, yeah, we see you. So, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, we, we ain't Candyman, but we see you. So, yeah. <laughs> go ahead and hit that, you know, subscribe. Yeah, look around back. <laughs> And hit that subscribe button, you know what I'm saying? And hit the notification bell to stay up to date with everything we do right here on Mostly Wrong Opinions, okay? And, um, you know, just one more thing. Just one more thing. Please hit that like button, okay? Please hit the like button. You can hit the dislike button. You can. Whatever it is, it is your opinion. But just remember, I can't do it in a Tony, a Tony Todd voice. It's mostly wrong. <laughs> it's mostly wrong. <laughs> Have a good one. See y'all in the next episode.